Okay, so let's take a look at this 3.4 operations with radicals. And um, you'll probably ask why we're going to use radicals here, but uh, we're going to learn how to uh, add, subtract radicals, multiply radicals, and reduce radicals so that we can use the quadratic equation, quadratic formula, and come up with exact answers rather than approximate answers. Just before we get started, it's very important you understand that you can only add like terms. So if you had something like this, 4x plus 5y minus 2x, um, just remember you can only add x's with x's, y's with y's. So if I wanted to add these, I would group the x's together and I would leave the y alone. So grouping the x's, 4x minus 2x is a total of 2x's plus 5y. And I cannot bring this any further, it's just 2x plus 5y. So um, don't try to add these two things together. On the other hand though, let's say we had 3x times uh, 4x minus uh, 5y. You can multiply anything with anything though. So if I went to go multiply this out, this is 3x times both of these things in here. 3x times 4x is 12x squared, and 3x times negative 5y, well, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, and then x times y is xy, right in alphabetical order. And that's my final answer. I cannot add these things because those are x squareds and those are xy's. So it's very important you understand that you can only add like terms with other like terms. So why do I bring this point up? Because when you start dealing with radicals, it's the same thing. So you may have something that looks like this. 3 root 2 plus 4 root 3 minus 7 root 2 plus 5 root 3. Now, if it asks you to add these things together, we've never seen these things before. We've kind of seen roots and we, you know, we know how to use them on our calculator, plug in our calculator. But if you take a look at this, this is the exact same as if you had, instead of the root twos, let's say we called root two x. So instead of the root two, you call it x. And instead of the root threes, let's call, call those y's. So instead of having you know, root twos and root threes, it's just x's and y's. So how would you add this top line, 3x plus 4y minus 7x plus 5y? Well, you would add the x's with the other x's, and you would add the y's with the other y's, and that's what you, where you would go with this. However, we're not dealing with x's and y's, we're dealing with radicals. So these are three root twos plus four of these root threes minus seven of these root twos plus five of these root threes. You can only add root twos with other root twos and root threes with other root threes. So I'm going to group the root twos together. So it's going to be three root two minus seven root two. And I'll write the root threes next plus four root threes plus five root threes. Now, if I add the root twos together, three root twos minus seven of these root twos, 3 minus 4 is negative, sorry, 3 minus 7 is negative 4 of these root 2's. And 4 root 3's plus another 5 of these root 3's is a total of 9 of these root 3's. So at the very end, you just end up with negative 4 root 2 plus 9 root 3. And you can't add those things together because those are root 2's and those are root 3's. This is my final answer. With that in mind, obviously, you can multiply anything with anything. So imagine we have something that looks like this. 2 root 3 multiplied by 5 plus 3 root 2. If I was to multiply this out, again, we treat this as one number, and we're going to multiply this out. This is 2 root 3 times both of these things in here. So 2 root 3 times 5, well, the 2 times 5 is 10, so 10 root 3s. You don't multiply it inside of the radical, it's just 2 times 5, and then the root 3 is still attached to it. And then 2 root 3 times 3 root 2, well the 2 times the 3 is 6, and root 3 times root 2, well that's root 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, and that's how you multiply radicals together. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6. And this is my final answer. I cannot go any further than that because those are root 3's and those are root 6's. I can't add those things together so it stays as is. 
Now, there's also breaking down radicals, so we'll get to this right now when we look at our lesson here. So our lesson here says radical, a square or a cube or a higher root such as, you know, root 4 or cubed root of 27, okay? The radical is a radical symbol, that square root. Square root of 12 is an entire radical, but it can be simplified. So root 12, it's very important you understand that 12 can be separated. There are factors of 12. There's 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and there's 4 times 3. Now, what you do in order to break down a radical, what they've done here, root 12, you're going to look at what multiplies to 12. Again, there's 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 4 times 3. You're going to look at the factors, and you're going to pick one of the factors that you can actually take the square root of. In this case, the only thing you can take the square root of is 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as root 4 times root 3, because that's the same as root 12. Root 4 times root 3 is root 12. And then I can break this up because the square root of 4 is a whole number, which is 2. So this ends up being 2 root 3, and that's root 12 broken down. If you took the square root of 12 on your calculator right now and memorized that number, it would be the exact same as if you took the square root of, or sorry, 2 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 12 is approximately 3 point something, and if you did 2 times root 3, it's going to be the exact same 3 point something. Now, notice why I didn't break up root 12 into root 6 times root 3. Why wouldn't I break that up into root 6 times root 3? Because you can neither take the square root of 6 or 3. So I wouldn't break this up because I can't simplify this any further. There's no reason to break that up. I have to make sure I break it up into one of the uh, roots has to be square rootable. So I can actually take one of the roots and of course I can take the square root of 4. So I can write it as a whole number. This is called a mixed radical, 2 root 3. So this is an entire radical where everything's underneath the radical sign, and this is a mixed radical, just like a mixed fraction and an improper fraction, an entire fraction. So let's do a couple of examples here. So it says key concepts, so you have to know these rules. Square root of a times square root of b is just the square root of whatever a times b is. And then c root a times d root b, I showed you an example of that. What you do is you multiply the whole numbers together, c times d out front, and you multiply the radicals together, it ends up being the square root of a b. And then only like terms or same uh, numbers under the radical can be added or subtracted to a single term. For example, root 3 times root 3, sorry, root 3 plus root 3, so 1 root 3 plus another root 3, is 2 of these root 3's. It's just like if you had x plus x, it's 2x, okay? But it's very important you understand you can multiply any radical with any radical, but you can only add like radicals. So number four, a simplified answer containing a radical is exact. Okay, so if you have your last answer with the radical, it's exact. An answer containing a decimal is an approximate answer. And this is why this is very important because we're going to be dealing with the roots of quadratic formulas, right? So finding the x-intercepts. And if you can't find the x-intercept using factoring and you go to use uh, the quadratic formula, of course, sometimes you end up with numbers that aren't so nice. So it ends up being a dec decimal answer. Well, that decimal is an approximate answer. It's not the exact value. An exact value would be having the radical there, and we're going to deal with radicals a lot. So for example, root 2 is an exact answer. But when you evaluate it, it will in your calculator, you'll get approximately 1.41. Uh, but that is rounded. That is not an exact answer. Okay, but what about the square root of 9? The square root of 9, uh, give the exact and approximate value of the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, and that is an exact answer. So if you can actually take the square root of that number, write it as that number. However, in the back of your book from now on, if you end up with an answer like this, root 2, we're going to leave it as root 2 unless it asks us to approximate to the nearest hundredth, tenth, whatever it asks us. So, let's take a look at example 1. Express each radical into lowest terms. So, root 50. 
So root 50, I'm going to make sure I bring this to lowest terms. It's like reducing a fraction. So I'm going to reduce this so that it is a mixed radical. So I look at 50, and the only things that multiply to 50 are 1 times 50, which is no good, 2 times 25, uh, 5 times 10. Those are the only things that multiply to 50. I'm looking for one of the factors that I can actually take the square root of, and that would be 25. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Why did I not choose 5 and 10? Because I cannot take the square root of either of those, so it would be useless to write square root of 5 times square root of 10, because I can't take the square root of either one of those. So square root of 25 times square root of 2, I can take the square root of 25, it's 5. So this is the same as 5 root 2. So how do you double check your answer? Well, if you took the square root of 50, it's approximately 7.1-ish. And um, if you did 5 times root 2, it's the exact same uh, answer, 7.1-ish. Okay? Um, now, letter B here, it says 5 root 18. So sometimes you end up having a whole number out in front, but you can still break down the radical. Now, 18, you have 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. Now, 18, you should break up to the 9 and 2. Sometimes you can't break them down. Sometimes all the factors, none of the numbers are square rootable, so you couldn't break it down any further. But unfortunately, this one here you can because the square root of 9, you can take the square root of 9. I'm not going to break it down into 3 and 6 because I cannot take the square root of either. So this will be 5 times root 18 is the same as root 9 times root 2. And then if I continue this, this is 5 times, I take the square root of 9, it's 3, and I still leave the root 2. And then 5 times 3 is 15, so this is 15 root 2. Okay? And, of course, I can double check my answer if I did 5 times root of 18. You know, I get a, an answer, uh, you know, 20-something. And if I did 15 times root 2, I'd still get the exact same answer. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Change the mixed radicals. So these are already mixed radicals. They want us to change this into entire radicals. So they don't want a whole number out front. They want us to change this back into an unsimplified radical, an entire radical, such as root 50. That is not simplified. This is the simplified version. How do you go from here backwards? So you can kind of look at the process here because root 50, I break down into root 25 times root 2. Now, I can go backwards because if I want just uh, radicals, I can rewrite the 5. The 5 is the same as root 25, because 5 squared is 25. So 5 is the same as root 25, right? And then root 25 times 2 is root 50. So that's what I'm going to apply over here. See, this over here, 5 root 3, I'm going to rewrite this into radicals only. Now, 5 can be written as root 25 because I know the square root of 25 is exactly like 5. And then I can actually multiply these together. Root 25 times root 3 is root 75. And this is the final answer for writing it as an entire radical. Now, normally you wouldn't ever do this process, you know, uh, making a mixed radical into an entire radical. Um, but we just have to understand the process here so we understand how to break down radicals and how to unbreak them and make them entire radicals, I guess. This one here is a little different. This one here requires us to um, write as an entire radical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the negative alone. But the 2, I'm going to switch to root 4 because the square root of 4 is 2. I left the negative out in front. The 2, I switched to root 4 because root of 4 is 2. And I leave the root 5 as root 5. So this ends up being negative and root 4 times root 5 is root 20. And remember, you can actually multiply any roots. They do not have to be the same. You can multiply anything with anything. It's just you cannot add and subtract anything with anything. They have to be like terms. So this is my final answer there.